All right, so the final activation of alcohols involves uh, sulfonyl chlorides. So these are sulfur again, but in a different oxidation state. So the other one was SOCl2. And so if I drew a look at the differences here, SOCl2. SOCl2 has four bonds. It's much more like carbon in different oxidation state of sulfur. This sulfur has six bonds. Also notice there's two chlorines here, only one chlorine here. And this doesn't actually do an inversion, right? The alcohol gets activated, but it doesn't get replaced yet. Right? So that's the key difference here is the alcohol gets activated, but you don't actually replace it yet. All the other three methods with like the HBr, with the PBr3, or the SOCl2, the alcohol gets activated and gets replaced. With the sulfonyl chlorides, the alcohol gets activated. It doesn't get replaced yet. So it lets you do like a second step to do your whatever you want to replace it with. Those other ones are hindering you, right? The other ones, either you replace it with a bromine or a chlorine. That's your or an iodine. That, those are your only options. Here now, you can replace this with any any type of nucleophile you want. So this gives you a little more freedom. All right. So how's this gonna work? You can go away. Super tiny. All right. First step. Lone pair in the oxygen, attack the sulfur. We're gonna add in, right? So it's not like a, it's not exactly like a carbonyl, but right, the similar type of mechanism, right? We're gonna add in. We do an addition reaction. It's not exactly a tetrahedral intermediate, but there's a leaving group there, a chlorine sitting there. So let's have let's let's break that down. That's an elimination reaction then. So an additional elimination reaction mechanism we've seen. So Cl minus isn't a good isn't a really good base, right? So it's not very it's a really un, less reactive base. So that's why we need the pyridine now at this point. So it's very similar to the SOCl2 where how it uses pyridine. It uses the pyridine to take the hydrogen off of here. And that gets us to our products. So this becomes a solid, there's a salt. So that comes out of solution, that's nice. Wouldn't be soluble in organic salt or organic solvent necessarily. The R group can be a methyl, a CH3, or a benzene ring. Those are the, if it's a CH3, it's an amesylate. These are highlighted as well in figure 14.87, the types. Um, different types work better than others, but R group can be different things. Same mechanism, just changing the R group. So sometimes you'll see this written as OTS or OMS. They're just telling you the type of sulfonyl chloride. Let me check out 14.87 for the types. But this is nice because now once you have this, right, I could use any nucleophile I want there. So let's see. Let's shrink this stuff down. Let's see how this could practically work. So let's say the R group was a methyl. If the R group was a methyl, this would have been my final product. Would you call it OMS for mesylate? So that means it looks like this. That's what OMS means, or the, the MS part is this part. So let's pick one of, what's one of the, the nucleophiles we learned? Which one do you guys want to use? 
Grenier, organolithium, acetylide ion, or hydride? Don't do hydride. Because otherwise, because we'll, if we add an H, if we add an H here, would we have a stereo center anymore? No. That's not fun. Okay, final Grenier. We'll do that one. What if we had step one, step two? We're going to add in a, a Grignard reagent. And then we're going to finish off with some H+. What's the product of that reaction going to be? So the first step is just going to be an SN2 reaction. So a Grignard, this Grignard is just a nucleophile. So what if I just drew it instead? If I said, okay, where, where are some nucleophiles we know? Cl minus is a nucleophile. Br minus is a nucleophile. We've talked about deprotonated alkynes. We've talked about H minus. Talked about organolithiums. We've talked about things like this, like a Grignard. But they're all just nukes, negatively charged nucleophiles. Right? Nucleophiles do SN2 reactions. This is a right, this is a secondary carbon. We've activated this alcohol, made it a good leaving group. So it doesn't matter what I use. If I call it nuke, let's just say, let's have, let's have the nucleophile attack. That position. So it's going to be an inversion. It's going to be an SN2. And we put the nuke there now, right? Now it's just the nucleophiles there. And whatever that nucleophile was, we just replace this with any one of these. Without the charge, obviously. Right? But that's all you that's all it is. Do you see that? Yeah, it's just it's just think about it in the generic term. Right? It's just a nucleophile. What do nucleophiles do? They can do those additional elimination reactions with carbonyls. They can do SN2 reactions. So it doesn't matter what you've learned all these different types of nucleophiles, but they all react in exactly the same way. So the last H plus was the H plus four because the other thing you make here is what we had to balance our charge. So you had, if it was a, you'd have O mesylate floating around. So the H plus is just to react with the O minus. That's all it's for. And to like quench or stop the stop any of these any of these negatively charged nucleophiles from reacting. So it doesn't matter what the nucleophile is, it all reacts the same way. And some are better than others, right? Br minus is a better nucleophile than Cl minus. Right? But the big thing is here, like this carbon has a negative charge, that carbon's a negative charge, but just being careful about that thing, numbering your carbons and those kind of things. H minus going there. But it's just an SN2. So it doesn't matter what the nucleophile is, it could be any of these kind of things, same process.